It wasn't just the restoration of an old house. It was a project that combined preserving an important piece of Adelaide history, providing much needed affordable community housing, while looking after the welfare of an elderly resident who has lived and will continue to live in the house she was raised in. It was important to preserve as much as we could of 293 Morford Street because it was the earliest remaining shop and residence in the city. The house was built in 1849, the shop was added in 1856 and council couldn't afford to keep it as a house museum uh, therefore we had to try and find ways to uh, make it economically viable. We were also conscious that uh, we wanted to keep Pauline Ween housed on the site if we could, so that was one of our primary objectives in doing the conservation work on, on the site. Council, having decided that it wanted to try and conserve the cottage and keep Pauline on the site, established that the cost of doing the building up um, as a house was going to be about $186,000. It didn't want to just divide the land off the back and sell it off to a developer. Um, it uh, wanted to have some control over the, the whole development. So it decided that uh, it would do a, a comprehensive scheme uh, to get the maximum yield out of the site. It, um, so it went into a, uh, or investigated a community housing arrangement um, with uh, Matcher and uh, we then commenced to do economic feasibility studies to see if that was possible. Um, Matcha became involved in the project at 293 Morford Street, um, uh, really through its partners in the inner city. Matcha works with Adelaide City Council and state government um, to identify uh, opportunities for the development of property for, uh, to provide accommodation, affordable accommodation, uh, to low income and vulnerable adults in the inner city. With complex sites of high heritage value like 293 Morford Street, um, Council often commissions a conservation plan, which it did in this case. Um, it commissioned Flight Path Architects to do that, to try and establish, through looking at its history and the fabric of the place, what was important, what wasn't important about the site, so we could define what the opportunities and constraints in dealing with it were. We were invited by Adelaide City Council to um, submit a fee offer and a registration of interest for um, the preparation of a conservation and management plan. And so just before Christmas in 93, um, I visited Pauline Wien in, um, in her, um, her home. And uh, I guess that drew me into the project. I was quite challenged by the project and, and the thought of preparing a conservation plan. But what also excited me was that there was the uh, possibility of looking at um, development options for the rear of the site. The conservation of heritage places like 293 Morford Street which are extremely dilapidated is very difficult and quite expensive. While Council can put some money into it we try and maximise the return from other parts of a site um, to provide maximum economic boost to the project. We did that in the case of this project by commissioning a, an economic feasibility study that looked at various options and it came up with the uh, conclusion that really three apartments at the back of the site plus converting the original heritage item um, to a house or improving it as a house provided really the best economic outcome for, for the site. Well when we became involved with the project there were a range of options that were under consideration from the marketplace, um, most prevalently to demolish the building and merge it with adjoining owner interests, um, which was certainly not in Council's agenda of retaining the heritage building and retaining Mrs Ween on the site as a resident. So the solution, we brought together a three-way partnership of state government fund of uh, about $312,000, Council funds of $65,000 which comprised both heritage incentive funds and low income housing funds and together with Mrs Ween's interest she was able to retain her equity and at the same time release her brother who was a part share owner of the building um, for his portion as well. So at the end um, a three way partnership that was a very successful project. In preparing the conservation plan, um, one of the exciting findings for me was to look at the sequential development of the cottage. 
how it grew from a three-room cottage to a four-room cottage and then the, the, with the addition of the shop to the front. Um, and basically what was exciting was that the evidence of that, um, that growth, that development, was clearly legible um, with, within, within the, the walls and the roof space um, of, of the building. And one of the first things we did was undertake and prepare a conservation plan for the property. Um, that document identified the various components of the building and gave them a ranking in terms of its heritage value. Um, and from that point we were able to develop conservation policies for different parts of the building in which identified what should be retained and what should be demolished. A lot of the things which were demolished included outbuildings and sheds and, and the original bathroom area which were in poor condition and had been added to over the years and therefore had a sort of lesser value than the, um, the original shop and the original cottage. I thought I'd wa walked into my worst nightmare. It was, uh, it was a, a real mess and, and just about ready to fall down. Probably uh, nine out of ten builders would have walked away and said, uh, look, I, I don't want to be involved in it, demolish it. But I think for builders to do heritage buildings, there needs to be a, a love of old buildings and uh, Luckily, I, I have that. But the decision was made to keep the kitchen, the shop front, the bedroom and the parlour, which were the original cottage and the extensions to that. Um, the kitchen was considered to be the heart of the house and it still had its original stove, which was um, in good enough condition to keep. So we ended up deciding to keep most of the walls in those areas and as much of the fabric was good. Some areas of the plaster were removed and then replastered, and if you look inside now you can see the areas of quite clearly which are red, which were original material which was kept, and the plaster which painted a different colour is new, um, and that's pretty much the same through the other rooms. The original owner was a bricklayer, he'd um, built the, the brick dressings, the coins and things out of brick, and he'd infilled between with lime concrete, um, with gravel from the River Torrens. That Lime concrete was severely dilapidated by salt damp in, in parts and some of the walls were quite high and um, had to be either stabilised or, or um, taken down. We were all quite, quite disappointed when we had to uh, actually remove the large stone and concrete wall on the side because it was an original wall but uh, we couldn't save it. The project budget didn't allow us to stabilise walls that were six metres high and so a decision was reluctantly taken to take down a couple of the walls and rebuild them in, in light uh, timber framing. After the decision was made to demolish the walls which we couldn't be kept, we obviously needed to um, provide the building with the new kitchen facilities and wet area facilities um, and open it up into making it more of a livable space at the back for whoever was going to live in it. Um, because it couldn't be seen from Morfitt Street, it was quite easy to build something at the rear which didn't impact on the heritage value of the front. The decision was made to build in lightweight because it would be cheaper and um, easy to build. There's issues of, sort of restricted side access as well, which had to be taken into account. We wanted to build in a scale and manner and form which tied in with the house at the front. So we built it as a lean-to across the back, raised the roof line up and dropped it down again to get the heights necessary. Um, created a space which can let someone live in it to a modern standard. The roof presented problems because the building had um, quite a few termites in it previously so there was not a lot of uh, sound original timber left so a decision was taken to uh, replace the roof timbers and replace the roof iron in exactly the same form as had previously existed. The shop was built in 1856 and it provided the, the original family with an economic uh, income and it's the only remaining example of a multi-pane timber shop front in the city, so it was fairly important to keep that as intact as we could. We did that by rebuilding the timber shop front um, because the timber glazing bars were extremely dilapidated, so we renewed those, put the original glass back. The timber storeboard, which you can see, which is below about knee level, below the sill, was kept and conserved, um, so that part is, is original as it was. The bricks above the shop front were in a badly uh, deflected state caused by the termites eating out the timber beam that was holding it all up. Rather than try and prop the bricks back up or push them back up, we took the, the decision to actually prop the bricks in the deflected position by putting a steel beam behind it, which has been done. 
The interior of the house was fascinating. It uh, was basically uh, an 1850s house that um, hadn't been changed very much. The kitchen still had it a very early um, uh, wood stove which was in use at the time. Um, the wall finishes uh, that had been layered over, over the years were still there. The parlour still had all of its uh, accretions of, of family memorabilia in it and uh, that was important to sort of try and keep as much of that as we could. The shop as, as you see it today is essentially uh, unchanged from over the last um, 80 years I would guess. The family crockery and the cabinet are still there. The bathroom is a very basic sort of bathroom. It had a chip heater and it had no sanitary sort of finishes on the walls or the floor. So council um, couldn't leave it as it was. So a decision was taken to build a new bathroom and to take the old one out. The outside laundry with its um, copper um, was, um, had to be taken down to provide some courtyard space for the house. So the, the laundry was shifted inside the new bathroom. The bedroom is essentially the same plan form as it, as it originally was, but we had to pull down and rebuild two walls because they were structurally unsafe. We wanted to keep as much of the inside finishes that uh, we discovered in the 1980s uh, in the new building. So those parts that were sound were, were kept and conserved. Those parts that weren't were replaced with uh, modern white finishes, which you can see. During the course of the conservation work, we uncovered the original front wall of the house. You can see that behind the Perspex screen. There's the lime concrete sort of uh, wall and the brickwork uh, around it. And we decided to leave that just to demonstrate that that was the, the front wall of the house. That was later covered up by plaster when the uh, shop was added and that became an internal wall of the shop. We staged the, um, the, the project so that um, Pauline would be, would be in constant occupation of the site. And what that meant was the new build project had to happen with her in occupation of the shop and dwelling. One of our key interests from the start of this project was Pauline Wayne um, as the, uh, the existing and long-term uh, resident of that house. I mean Pauline is a, uh, a well-known figure in the inner city in this area having uh, been born nearby and lived in that house all her life. Um, one of our key concerns shared with our other partners Adelaide City Council and State Government was from the beginning of this project to get an outcome which would ensure that Pauline could remain in her house. She then moved from the shop and dwelling um, when the three-storey new build was completed into the ground floor um, apartment, which I thought had been beautifully designed with, you know, big windows and, you know, natural light, a nice courtyard, all those sorts of things that one enjoys in a new, a new place. But what, what was evident to me was that Pauline had actually um, put newspapers o over the windows so that some of the, um, you know, the darkness that was there in the shop and dwelling was, was retained. And then, of course, when, when we finished the, the new work on um, the conservation and adaptation of the shop and dwelling, Pauline saw how lovely it was and expressed a wish to move back in. So uh, it was a lovely staging process and it also ensured her constant occupation. I'll never forget coming down to the site with a uh, state government representative inspecting the site and Pauline showing us uh, the pieces of loose iron on the back fence where the squatters had come through uh, and then also uh, proceeding to show us uh, the hatchet which she uses, used to use to split the timber for her chip hot water heater uh, and showing us how she chased those people off with her hatchet. <laughs> we adopted a model whereby um, each apartment was built on one level um, which is pretty um, innovative at the time, but we, it, it's a, an approach which we have now used and which Matcha has used um, in other community housing projects throughout the city. I guess it's established a partnership with the uh, uh, Council Heritage Unit um, and showed I guess how outcomes for the community could be achieved in terms of social and heritage outcomes working together to, to um, improve, maintain the fabric of the inner city community. We've had a number of other projects in Halifax Street Sturt Street, 
um, in Morford Street um, that have built on that model um, and uh, we look forward to doing more. So we think this has been a particularly successful project. Um, initially it's resulted in the conservation of a heritage listed cottage which otherwise would have either fallen down or been demolished. Um, it's allowed uh, the house at the, next, at the next level to be adapted and brought up to current standards so that it's adequate for people to live in um, with modern needs and requirements. It's also allowed an inner city site to be developed with the apartment building here which has increased the economic yield and viability of the site. I mean I guess that allowed the whole project to um, proceed in the first place. And it's also allowed uh, Matcher, or have given Matcher the confidence to move on to other projects and do a similar thing. There were um, numerous positive outcomes fr from this project. The first, I guess, is that um, Pauline Wien is still on the site, and, which was, I guess, one of the prime objectives. And, and um, I can still walk through the central market and bump into Pauline and have a chat with her and know that she's very happy. Um, for, from our point of view, it was, it was an exercise in delivering um, apartment buildings which um, were low-cost housing opportunities for, for peop disadvantaged people, um, where they enjoyed northern aspects, views and space that um, the commercial market um, very rarely delivers. The Adelaide City Council needs to be applauded for its heritage incentive scheme. I think without that there would be many buildings uh, lost to the City of Adelaide that uh, certainly are worthwhile and deserve restoring as this one does. say thank you for the chance to walk through and see your new home and to see some of the history and to have what I found was a fascinating history lesson. I'm so delighted that we've been able to preserve the history of the home uh, as, as well as now provide you uh, a marvellous home back in your own home. And you, I know you lived in the, the new units at the back which is also part of Mantra and part of uh, Satcher funding. Uh, I understand that you said, look, before I move back in, I'm going to have a look at this place to make sure it's come up to scratch. Uh, <laughs> and uh, apparently you are happy with it. And I have great pleasure in officially declaring open uh, Pauline Wern's new renovated home. <laughs>